Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to look at a really fun product, something I've kind of become very, very fond of, and it's the Sparkos Labs uh, Gemini headphone amplifier. It's a balanced headphone amplifier that can also work as a pre-amplifier, and I've used it extensively for that. So sit back, relax, and we're going to talk about this wonderful product. The Sparkos Gemini headphone amplifier is a really, really unique product. It is a balanced headphone amplifier, balanced on XLR, has a single ended quarter inch output. It puts out 2 watts at 32 ohms or 750 milliwatts at 300 ohms. It has a user adjustable high-low gain, and this could also be kind of the more tube, less tube sound switch as well. It uses a really high-quality Alps Blue Velvet potentiometer for volume control, and it can be used as a preamp, as I mentioned. It has the inputs and outputs. Now, I did use this extensively as a preamplifier when I was doing the review of the two-channel power amplifiers, the ADCOM and the Galleon unit I just recently did and it worked exceptionally well for that and I really kind of fell in love with it. I've also used it with almost every pair of headphones I have from my Sennheiser Mastrop 6XX to my FIO FT1s to my Hyphaman uh, HS 400s and also my old classic Sony uh, MDR V6s. Um, so it, and it does a great job with all of those. It is a unique design and Andrew really kind of threw all of the, his good design skills at this. So it uses his 2590 discrete op amps. It uses his uh, discrete voltage regulators. It has zero global feedback. It has no capacitors in the signal path, which is very unique, especially on a unit that uses a tube buffer. Um, obviously, we can roll tubes, and we'll talk about that when I open it up. Um, it does have a, a tube heater soft start, and it does have a 40-second delay for that. The frequency response is 10 hertz to 100,000 hertz. And as I mentioned, it's, t it's a full uh, 2 watts at 32 ohms and 750 milliwatts at 300 ohms um, and it has a very very high damping factor. It's really well constructed and again I kind of used it as a preamp as much as I used it as a headphone amp and I would team it up with a variety of different amplifiers so on my desktop I was using it with the G-Horn from Shit Audio and that was a good combination. So I'm going to go ahead and reset. We're going to open this thing up and we're going to take a look inside and we're going to talk about tube rolling and all kinds of other stuff. And where do you see the inside? It is really well designed. So as you can see from looking inside the Sparkos Gemini headphone amplifier, this thing is really well built. Big, robust power supply, obviously using Andrew's uh, proprietary discrete voltage regulators. Um, again, uses his 2590 discrete op amps uh, in combination with the tube. Um, these are all Rubicon capacitors. It's all very, very high quality. And of course, this is manufactured in the U.S. Now, one of the things you can do, depending on the tube you want to roll, so the 6922 that comes stock with it, that's a type 1 tube. So you would adjust the jumper over here for type 1 or type 2, and I'll insert a picture showing a closer, uh, close up view of that. In addition to that, you also have to adjust the tube bias, and that's done over here. And then let's say you're an IEM listener and you want to add an additional 15 dB of attenuation, you can adjust it through these jumpers back here. So very, very well laid out, very, very intelligent. Now, the tube types it'll take is obviously the 6922. I have some 12 AU7s that I've been using, but I kind of settled and I have a bunch of different tubes. Thank you to the folks at PS Vane for sending me some tubes to roll with this as well. And thank you to Andrew for sending me some Electro Harmonix. The tube I wound up settling on is the 12BH7, and that's an old Macintosh uh, tube, and it has, it's just wonderful, full of harmonics and wonderful things like that. So it could take a 6922, it can take a 12AX7, a 12AT7, 12AU7, 12AY7, a 6AQ8, a 5751, a 6CG7, a 6N1, and of course my favorite, 12BH7. In the description of the video, I'll put a list of all of the different tubes that it can roll. So you've got a, literally a dozen or more types of tubes because if you take like a 12 uh, AX7, it's also known as an ECC83, an ECC803S, or a 7025. So there's lots of tube types. And, this, and it, every time you do that, it does change the character. Now, I had mentioned that it has this high bias. And when it's in low bias, it's more tube than it is um, 
op amp. When it's in high bias, obviously you need the extra voltage that the op amp can deliver. And so you can adjust the tubiness of the sound depending on the, on the gain switch position. Anyway, that's the inside of the Gemini headphone amp. Really impressive product. By the way, that's a WEMA capacitor back there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and button it up and we'll reset and we'll talk about how it sounds. Well, as you can see from looking inside the Sparkless Gemini headphone amp preamp, it is a remarkably well built, very well engineered product. Andrew Sparks is obviously very talented. It's beautiful. Top quality components, no compromises. At $899, it is worth it just for the build quality alone, let alone how good it sounds, and it does. And I used it a bunch of different ways. Obviously, I used it as a headphone amp, but I also used it extensively as a preamp for my two-channel power amp reviews, the Adcom and the Galleon TSA-75, and it was a great companion for that. And because I could roll tubes, I could get a little different sound quality out of each, and I found with the Adcom, probably the best tube was the 6922 stock tube from Electroharmonix or the PS Vein Horizon uh, 12AU7. That was a great combination with the Adcom. With the Galleon, I found that those two, maybe a little too much detail for the Galleon, it tends to be a little neutral anyway. The Electroharmonix 12AU7 sounded quite good, but I wound up settling on the Electroharmonix BH, 12BH7, which has a very warm kind of traditional tube sound, which I really enjoyed. Now, when I was using it as a preamp, I fed it from a variety of different sources. So I fed it from my turntable running through the Cambridge Audio Alva Duo Phono Preamp. That was marvelous sounding. I fed it from my Gishelli Labs J2S using, not unsurprisingly, Sparkos 3602 op amps in it. Wonderful. I used it with the Gishelli Labs Daisy. Now, that had the standard TI op amps in it. That's an amazing DAC. Review soon, if you haven't seen it already. I used it with my uh, Shit Bifrost. I used it with the Fio K9 AKM DAC. I used it with the Hyphenman EF400 Himalaya Ladder DAC. I used it with the Cord Cutest. I used it with the Denifrips Pontus. I used it with the Orchard Audio Pecan Premier, Pecan Pie Premier Plus, but only using that as a deck, not using the streamer function. I also, for giggles, I put the Fio K11 little uh, $170 R2R DAC on it, as well as, and this is kind of an interesting piece, the Duke Audio DAC Q11, which has an ESS chip and an AKM chip and swappable op amps. Sparkos does fit. We'll talk about that. And so I threw a lot of stuff at it, and honestly, this didn't matter what I plugged into it. It sounded great. It was very, very good. Good detail, good, good drive, good power. That power supply inside gave this enough drive on the line level signals that it just sounded wonderful. It threw a huge image. Um, the Adcom's limited in its image just because of the, the vintage and the design. The Galleon, the image was great. It was very, very good. Um, I also, this was a great companion. When I did the review of the uh, Monitor Audio Silver 100s, which tend to be a little bit bright on the top end, this with the 12BH7 tube uh, running on the uh, Galleon amp toned that down really nicely and also running on the Orchard Audio Star Crimson uh, Ultra amp that I reviewed. That was a good combination. So this was a faithful companion for me in doing a lot of other reviews. I used this often as the preamp when I was reviewing DACs or reviewing the amps. It gave me a good insight into their particular sound quality so I could, you know, figure out the details and share with you my conclusions on it. Now, as a headphone amplifier, I did use it with my uh, Sennheiser Mastrop 6XX, which are very mid-range centric. So the 6922 stock tube and the PS Vane Horizon 12AU7, that was a great combination. It added a little more detail on the top end, a little more drive on the bottom end. The 12AU7 Electroharmonix, again, a little different sound signature, maybe a little too much mid-range bloom, uh, maybe too much of a good thing in the mid-range. It was, it was fine. Same with the 12BH7, although I had a little better bass drive, but again, maybe a little too much of a good thing on the mid-range centric Sennheisers. Now, with the Hyphenman HE400 SEs, that's a magnetic planar headphone, and that has an extreme amount of detail. It is very good. I'm not, it's not bright. M maybe accentuated a smidge, but excellent detail. So I found that the 6922 and the PS Vane Horizon 12AU7, too much of a good thing. It was a little, little more than I liked in that upper mids and upper mids and into the treble region. The 12AU7 from Russia, that one did a very, very good job 
um, kind of smoothed things out a little bit, softened a, maybe a little more than I cared for in the uh, right in the lower mid range, and then the 12BH7. Overall, and no matter what I was listening to, this wound up being my kind of tube of choice. That gave me that smooth, warm sound signature that you guys know I like, and I was getting it in, in excellent quantity on the uh, HE400 SEs. It was a great combination, uh, and it made that headphone very, very enjoyable, even though it is already, but it made it extra enjoyable. Now, with the FIO FT1s, that headphone seemed to play well with everything I threw at it, tube-wise. Um, it's just an excellent headphone. Um, I think it offers tremendous performance. I wound up settling most of the time with that headphone on the 12BH7 or the Russian-made 12AU7, although it did sound excellent with the 6922 and the PS Vein Horizon 12AU7. It really sounded great with everything, but I think I liked a little additional warmth of the BH7 and the 12AU7 from Russia, just a little bit uh, better. Um, also, too, as a headphone amplifier, this thing throws a wonderful image inside your head. Very detailed, very nuanced, uh, especially when you get good headphones on it. Uh, and I'm fortunate to have a couple pair of really good headphones here. Now, with my Sony MDR-V6s, that's a vintage headphone. That's a studio headphone going back 35 years. They're bass monsters. Uh, and I found that the PS Vein 12AU7, the Horizon 12AU7, that was the best combination with that. Um, and I didn't do a lot of listening like that, but it was really good and really fun, especially if you want to listen to anything, you know, rock, hip hop, something that's got good bass line. That was a great combination. So the Sparkos Gemini headphone amp slash preamplifier has been a wonderful companion. I have absolutely loved having it here in the studio. I've worked it to death. Uh, I've ridden it hard and put it away wet often. Um, and it really is a wonderful product. I think excellent, well-built, well worth the money and highly recommended. So again, just wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you did, I would hope you'd give me a like and a subscribe. My subscriber count is growing wonderfully. You guys have been just so supportive and I can't thank you enough for that. If you wish to say thank you, you can. There's a thank you button at the bottom of the video window if you want to buy me a granola bar. There's also a link to the channel membership in the pinned comment and in the video description. And also in the video description are Amazon affiliate links. There will be a link to the Sparkos website. I have no affiliate link with them, and that's fine. But if you want more information, they've got some great detail on there. It's an excellent spot. You know, there's an excellent product page for the Gemini headphone amp. And if you have questions, they're happy to answer. They're wonderful people to deal with. So there is a link there to find out more. Obviously, I have some of my playlists with the reference material and the tracks I use when I'm doing reviews. Um, I appreciate you guys sharing playlists. Please continue to do so. We're building out that community page nicely. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can do that as well. Surprisingly, I think I've run out of things to say other than I really, really love this product. It is excellent. Very, very good. Um, and hats off to Andrew Sparkos and Alyssa for building a wonderful product. I'm Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And now it's time for you, your mission, your task, should you choose to accept it, is to go listen to some really good music on a great pair of headphones or a great amplifier, maybe with the Sparkos Gemini as your faithful companion. Thanks so very much and have a great day. Old guy hop, I can't be beat.